article types, scholarly versus popular. In this video, you learn the differences between scholarly and popular journal articles. Uh, they will be the usually these are the primary uh, sources you'll be using in your papers uh, that you'll be assigned. Uh, you'll also be able to determine which type of journal your article comes from, and also how to use tools that are provided in the library's databases uh, to help you determine which type of journal your article comes from. Uh, so first off, we're going to look at scholarly articles. Uh, these are usually written by experts, uh, reviewed by experts, and also intended for experts in that field. Uh, so one of the downsides to this is that you may have trouble sometimes understanding uh, the, the work put into it uh, because they will usually use technical language uh, that's familiar only to professionals in that particular field. Uh, so sometimes you can run into issues where you may not understand information that's presented in there. Um, it will also, you'll be able to tell this type because it will feature in-depth primary accounts of the research, uh, which is usually conducted by the authors of the article, and it will have full citations to back up that research. Uh, often you'll see uh, a notice that a particular article is peer-reviewed, and we'll take a look at what that means too. Uh, usually for peer-reviewed uh, articles, before the article is published, it is reviewed by an editor and other specialists in that subject area, and it's to verify that the, re the research that's presented uh, is original, uh, the work is valid, and that it's properly presented. Uh, where this is nice is that it will ensure that any information you use from this type of article uh, would be seen as more uh, would be better to be more correct and therefore a preferred source for a paper, which is often why instructors will ask you to focus mainly on this type of uh, article. Um, so while, as I said before, you can sometimes run into issues with material that's covered by a scholarly article, uh, and you may think in that case that since they're mainly for experts, uh, you won't be able to use them at all uh, you don't necessarily have to feel intimidated by them. Uh, most scholarly articles are also intended by the authors to be used by others, uh, since it's uh, by others for their own research, which includes students like yourselves. Uh, so they try not to be too complex because they want to make the material accessible for other people. Uh, now we'll look at popular articles. These, the difference here is that these will generally be written by journalists and writers that are probably not experts in that field. Uh, they'll use primarily non-technical language. Uh, this is to make it easier for general readers uh, to understand it, kind of to simplify material. Uh, and it's also intended primarily for entertainment. Uh, that means it's usually a secondary discussion of the research that someone else has conducted and is more just like someone talking about it, so it is often presented without citations. Uh, the article is reviewed only by the editor, uh, who is also usually not an expert in that field. Uh, this is where sometimes you'll run into trouble using this as a source. That's why it's seen as kind of like a secondary source compared to a scholarly article. Um, so here we'll see where the benefits of the use of each type of article. Uh, scholarly are useful because they're original research and they have very rigorous approaches to problems by experts in a particular field. Uh, students can almost always use scholarly articles in their research. Uh, you'll very rarely run into a professor who would prefer that you not use this type. Uh, and oftentimes they will require you to use at least a certain number of these types of articles. Uh, which is why it's helpful to kind of learn your way and learn how to pick these out. Uh, whereas popular articles are also useful, uh, but more in their coverage of just that current events and popular opinion, um, it kind of will give you an idea and can kind of be a stepping stone to looking at the more complicated articles on a source. Uh, they can be kind of seen as a general overview, uh, but these should always be supplemented with research from scholarly articles. Uh, books or other sources of information. Uh, so now we're going to take a look and see how you can tell what type of journal your article comes from. 
Um, scholarly journals, uh, as we saw with the articles, they're usually intended only for professionals within a, within a particular field or industry uh, or for those doing research in those areas. Uh, you'll see them, they'll generally not have a lot of pictures or advertisements. Uh, that's because usually they're paid for as a professional uh, requirement for a lot of people, so they don't really need to advertise. Uh, the title is usually a good giveaway. You'll see a lot of, uh, we'll have titles like the Journal of or the Bulletin of, and that's sometimes a good giveaway because it's like seen as the official journal of that particular field. Um, usually in the author's cr uh, credit they will be listed, you will see their credentials listed after their name and uh, that is to kind of show that that person is qualified in that field. Uh, so you can see in the example there you would it wouldn't be just written by John Smith, it would make sure to include his PhD uh, credentials there as well. And another way to tell is usually a scholarly, uh, an article in a scholarly journal uh, we'll have an abstract. Uh, so now we'll take a look at what an abstract is. Uh, they are generally a brief summary of the article uh, where the author or the authors will lay out uh, the goal of their research, uh, how they did their research, their methodology, and the results of that research and the conclusions they have drawn. Uh, the abstract is meant to uh, kind of bring in the reader. It's something that you can take a look at and decide if you want to devote the time uh, to read the article and view the information presented within. Um, so as we said before, another way to tell was that uh, a lot of times scholarly articles and journals will not have a lot of graphics and a lot of pictures, um, which is a kind of usually a good giveaway. But when they do have them, they are always, almost always used only in support of the research. Uh, so in a lot of cases, you won't see a lot of pictures, but you will see graphs or tables that depict uh, the results of a lot of their tests. So this is an example of an article uh, that's a scholarly one on uh, global warming. You can see here that uh, there is a fairly uh, large table that presents a lot of information uh, that refers directly to the tests that the authors did. And now we'll take a look at a popular one uh, since it is intended for entertainment purposes, uh, they will often kind of jazz up the display with lots of pictures and graphics to keep your interest in the article. So we'll take a look here. You can see this is also a article on global warming, but you can see they've kind of the title, they try to keep the title to grab your interest. Uh, there's not really any abstract to see and they've opened it up with uh, a nearly half-page picture for the article. Um, and so in that case, sometimes it's the only thing you need to do to be able to tell uh, which type of journal your article is coming from is just to actually view the journal itself. Uh, so I've got two examples here of two different uh, journals. So you can take a look here and just kind of have a guess at which one is the scholarly one. Uh, if we go by just the cover, you can see the Time magazine has the picture and a lot of other little blurbs of other articles. Whereas the Journal of Education, uh, it meets our, uh, the sign that it's the Journal of, um, but it's a very plain cover that just lists the articles and the authors within. Uh, so sometimes it's very easy to tell uh, which, of a, which of two journals is the scholarly one versus the popular one. Uh, so now we're going to take a look at using uh, tools that are built into the library's databases to determine uh, an article type. And the reason this is a little bit different is because uh, using our library, we have some print subscriptions, but in often cases, uh, we do not have a lot of scholarly uh, print journals. So when you're doing research, you will often be viewing the article uh, indirectly through the library's databases, uh, which means, unfortunately, that a lot of the, the ways we were just looking at that you can tell visually the type of article is a little trickier how to do. Uh, but fortunately, uh, many of the 
producers of databases have added in tools to make determining which article type uh, just a little bit easier. So first off, one of the databases I'm going to look for uh, look at is our Academic One file. Uh, so basically, once you do your search, right off the bat, under the filter your results, it will give you the option to switch and show only peer-reviewed uh, journals. And one of the ways that it divides the search results is by uh, journal type. So you can see there's academic journals. Uh, these would most likely be the scholarly ones versus uh, popular magazines, which that would be the popular titles. Um, so in a lot of cases, the databases, like I said, will have uh, this functionality built into it. Uh, you can see from EBSCO, uh, our OmniFile database, it is actually right here even before you do the search. You can click there, and then when you do your search, it will only return scholarly or peer-reviewed journals. Uh, so in that case, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of find these, uh, but it is still useful to kind of know the difference yourself so you're kind of able to make that determination on your own. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at the library, and we'd be more than happy to help you out with this.